Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the Solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. All hail adore Trinity, all hail eternal unity. O God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, ever one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. <laughs> As we gather today to honor our God, who is Father, and Son, and Spirit, God who is creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. We know that as creatures, we have not always reflected his love to the world. So let's pause and acknowledge our sinfulness. Lord Jesus, you are a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and in adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God, the Lord possessed me, the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth at the first, before the earth, when there were no depths I was brought forth when there were no fountains or springs of water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills I was brought forth, while as yet the earth and fields were not made, nor the first clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there, when he marked out the vault over the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above when he fixed fast the foundations of the earth, when he set for the sea its limit so that water should not transgress his command. Then was I beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, 
and I found delight in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, what is man that you should be mindful of him? or the Son of Man, that you should care for him. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will speak what he hears, and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I was starting to ponder this great mystery of the Most Holy Trinity this week, my thoughts drifted back to something very earthbound. A movie I saw a while ago on one of the streaming services, it was entitled Jonathan, and it concerned a young man who suffered from what is commonly referred to as a multiple personality disorder. There's a more technical name for that now, but it's basically a person who has two distinct personalities in one body. And in the case of Jonathan, 
One of those personalities was very orderly and responsible, and the other personality was self-indulgent and chaotic. And so these two contrasting personalities were constantly at loose and uh, in this one person. And so there was this doctor slash scientist who was able to do something that only doctors in movies can do, which is to separate the two personalities. So there was Jay, who lived from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and he always followed a set routine, always had the same thing for breakfast and dinner. He was always on time for work, always well-dressed, and was advancing well in his career. And then he would come home and go to sleep very early, like about 7 o'clock, and a few moments later, John would come to life. And John, on the other hand, drifted from low paying, one low-paying job to another and spent most of the night drinking and clubbing and having casual sex with a variety of women. And after being out all night, he would come home and fall asleep, and a few moments later, Jay would wake up and begin the day again. Now, what this doctor was able to come up with, this functional solution to these two personalities, was actually unsustainable because both Jay and John suffered acutely from extreme loneliness. Jay fell in love with the woman at work, but he could have no relationship with her outside of work, outside of his daily routine. And John could have all of his fill of drunken sexual encounters, but he couldn't spend time doing the ordinary routine things that people in love do during the daytime when they're sober. So both personalities came to the conclusion that one must die to free the other one to form a real relationship. Now, I won't spoil the ending, but the real question is, what does that have to do with Trinity Sunday? Well, I think the dilemma that John and Jay faced touches on the essence of who God is and what it means to be human and why the Trinity is a core belief in our faith. Because the very essence of God is a relationship of three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. Each has a unique identity, but they're united in a community of perfect love. A God that lives in lonely isolation is not the Christian God. Now, we all know that St. Patrick, many centuries ago, managed to explain the Trinity by showing a shamrock, one leaf with three petals on it, and to show, well, there are three persons, but only one God. Well, that may have solved the mathematics of the Trinity, but it really misses the point about the Trinity, because it's a static picture of God. And it misses the real dynamism of love that's flowing between the Father and the Son, and the Son and the Spirit, and the Spirit and the Father. And you see, when we look around, we see that everything that God created is created to be in a relationship, somehow a reflection of God's self. Think about something as basic as water which most of us learned in high school chemistry consists of two parts of hydrogen and one part oxygen. Well, what if hydrogen and oxygen stopped getting along? They decided to break up. You know, hydrogen says to oxygen, you know, I think it's time that I start seeing other elements. What would happen? Lake Michigan would dry up. The Chicago River would dry up. We'd have no more water. So. When we think of creation, we're part of that creation, that we ourselves are created in the image and likeness of God. And that most certainly means that to be human 
means to be in relationship with other people, that it's imprinted upon us with the likeness of God. We can't live like John or Jay for very long because it's inhuman. Even those who have lived as hermits all by themselves, they don't live completely alone. They're in constant relationship with God and they draw the world in through their prayer. I know one famous hermit who kept a globe in his cell and whenever he would begin to pray, he would look at that whole world and draw everybody and everything into his prayer. When we want to impose severe punishment on a prisoner, we put them in solitary confinement. Of all the awful things that can go on in prison, one of the worst things is simply having no human contact. So we speak today of the Trinity as a mystery, not because it's a problem to be dismissed because we can't solve it. It's simply to say that we can't fully grasp it. Our brains are too small and our hearts are too limited to embrace everything that it means. But we can peer into the mystery of the Trinity and be formed by that mystery, to be perfectly united yet perfectly myself. We never achieve that as human beings, but we're always invited to grow toward those kinds of relationships, that it's really the model presented to us. That's what God has called us to image in our daily life. And our scripture readings today don't so much explain the Trinity as they explain how our ancestors in faith came to this dynamic understanding of God. Our first reading from the Book of Wisdom suggests to us that, you know, God was never alone. There was this playful spirit present to God. And the Trinity didn't come into being when Jesus was born or when the Spirit descended. What the Scripture talks about is that the Word of God, the second person of the Trinity, was always there but became flesh when he was born in Bethlehem. But the relationship was already there. And real love is never a love that's turned in upon itself and possessive. It's, it's, it's expansive. It reaches out. It creates. It wants to create more love. And so God the Creator, God the Father, creates everything. And then when we chose to isolate ourselves from God because of sin, God came himself, took on human flesh, was incarnate. And as St. Paul says, through this ultimate act of love on the cross, God destroyed the barrier that we had put up, that we, we had put up between ourselves and God, so that we could have peace with God through Jesus Christ. And this peace that Paul is talking about is not just the absence of conflict, but it's shalom, inner and outer peace, that through Jesus Christ we were brought back into this dynamic relationship that lives within the persons of the Trinity. And then in our gospel today, Jesus speaks of the Spirit who draws us more deeply into the life of the Trinity into relationships that are not possessive or abusive or self-centered, but life-giving and empowering. And it's interesting, one of the ends brought about by the sacrament of marriage is that we as couples help one another grow in holiness, that we help one another allow our love to become more like God's love. And so we can begin to see how and why the Trinity is indeed the central mystery of our faith. When we were baptized, we were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And these were not just words that were given to us, that we were called into a relationship with each of the persons of the Trinity. And the unfortunate part that I find today is that so many of the people who were baptized into the Christian faith and into the Trinity 
have never grasped that about God, but they were called into relationship with all three persons of the Trinity. Because when you ask so many people, well, what's God like? Do you believe in God? And then you ask him to describe God, and the answers so often are very generic, very abstract, very distant. There's this sort of vaguely benevolent force that, well, quite frankly, is largely irrelevant to my life, and so it has no particular priority in my life. But see, a Trinitarian God cannot be so easily ignored because a Trinitarian God is always in our face. God didn't just create at the beginning of time and then retire, right? He didn't create Hawaii just as a place where he could retire to. God's still creating. He brought the world out of nothing, and he's still trying to bring something out of what sometimes seems like nothing within us. Our own sins, our own failures, our own lost opportunities, God can still create something good out of that if we allow God to do that. And the Redeemer, the second person, the Trinity, is still walking with us, showing us how to live as a child of God, still trying to break down the barriers that we create in our world and between us and God. And then the Spirit is living within us, inviting us into a deeper trust in God and reminding us of all that Jesus taught us. So our God, Father, Son, and Spirit is relentlessly reaching out to us as Father, Son, and Spirit. So when we talk about the Trinity, although it can be confusing, we're really not wrapping God in obscurity. It's really an invitation to know God more intimately and that are recognizing that our own efforts to create peace in our world and understanding in our world and to break down walls and barriers have a divine purpose because what we're really doing is imprinting the image of the Trinity on the world that God created, a world in which we can all celebrate our own uniqueness and move beyond the things that divide us. Today we return to the recitation of the Nicene Creed, which was crafted in part to help us better understand that mystery of the Holy Trinity. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Invited into a relationship with the triune God, we offer our prayers to the one who loves us. For the Church, that the Trinity will inspire us to work for the common good, encourage and accept one another, and make room for the gifts of one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrants and refugees and strangers in our midst, that they may find hope in our concern for justice and feel the warmth of our love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our common home, that we may embrace our role as stewards of the earth and prioritize care for God's creation. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for marriage, that God will strengthen their commitment to one another and help them encounter Jesus and their love for each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing, that God will bring an end to the COVID pandemic, heal those who are ill, and support those who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been touched by violence, that God will give eternal life to those who have died by violence recently and console those who are grieving their passing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, created in your image, help us to embody the love that flows between Father, Son, and Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The play of the Godhead, the Trinity's dance, embraces the earth in a sacred romance, with God the Creator and Christ the true Son, and twined with the Spirit a web daily spun in spangles of mystery, three in one. The warm mists of summer, cool waters that flow, turn crystal as ice when the wintry winds blow. The taproot that nurtures the shoot growing free, the life-giving fruit fall and ripe on the tree. More mystic and wondrous, the great one in three. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. 
broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with the seven holy founders, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop. The order of bishops, the clergy, the ministers, the entire people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's share God's gift of peace with the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I clasp unto my heart this day the shielding strength of the Trinity, my calling on its mystic name, the three in one, the one in three, through whom all nature was created, eternal Father, clear it word. I praise thee, God of my salvation, salvation won by Christ the Lord. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. O God, Almighty Father, Creator of all things, the heavens stand in wonder while earth your glory sings. O most holy Trinity, undivided unity, holy God, mighty God, God immortal be adored.